special edition rolling on from the star in Frisco as the preseason is now in the rear view mirror. Welcome in everybody with Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. The Dallas Cowboys have played their three preseason games and they are now working into the regular season with all sorts of intrigue around this 2024 football team. And I mean, with everything that's come together, training camp, joint practices, preseason games, and then a whole lot more. Barry Church, what's your biggest takeaway whenever it comes to the Cowboys preseason? Well, my biggest takeaway when it comes to this preseason is the speed of the defense. You know, believe it or not, I feel like they're faster than they were last year in all three levels, defensive line, linebacker, secondary. They're hunting all over the place, and Mike Zimmer has these guys flying. I'm going to have to go to the defensive side of the, of the ball as well, but for me, it's less about the guy's ability and more about this scheme. This Mike Zimmer defense seemingly has been instilled. Guys are responding to it. I feel like more, less is being asked of guys in terms of what they're supposed to do uh, athletically, but they're just seemingly being in the right place and falling into plays left and right. Well, what surprised me is the way guys came in offensively and they understood the offense, especially the wide receivers. You didn't see a lot of mistakes. And early in camp, you didn't see a lot of offsides. And that just says that the guys understand what the offense uh, needs to run uh, efficiently, and they did a great job, I think. I think there's a lot of confidence around this defense right now. Offense is building that confidence as we go along, trying to get the run game to catch up, maybe with the, uh, the firepower of the passing game. But while we're on the topic of confidence, we've already had a one shot of it. I just want to say the first time this season, Nate Newton wears a sport coat, mm. wears an actual mm. suit jacket, and it's got the black college Hall of Fame logo right there oh on the right hand side. Yeah. I just want to show it off a little bit. I just want to show it off. You look good, Nate. You Thank look good. You. Let's go into some of the different adjustments that this team has made. I mentioned building confidence. They've done so in terms of the depth on the defensive side, including a signing of Carl Lawson. Here's what Lawson had to say about really the new challenges at hand and being the newest Dallas Cowboys. Um, I'm just humbled and I'm excited to be here uh, and get to work and I just like I said I, I've been in the game for a long time but I do feel like a younger player because like I just never been able to put it all together I know how talented I am and I just know I just I want to keep working to be able to bring that to our organization to win and just, you know bring a Super Bowl back to Dallas so Carl Lawson talking about the challenges at hand Barry moving from team to team is not easy but this team needed some depth how much can he help it I think he can help out in a bunch when we talk about this defensive side of the football. I think it was a solid depth pickup for the Dallas Cowboys when you look at it because the defensive line, they rotate more than any position on the defensive side of the football. So when you're talking about a Demarcus Lawrence who's in year 11, may need a breather. Micah Parsons may need a breather. They need somebody that can come in there that's familiar with Zimmer's system and still be able to produce at a high level. I think it's a great pickup just from the standpoint that you have somebody who actually has some reps and some understanding of the game of the NFL. You talk about somebody who has over four years or four seasons where they've had over five sacks. So there you got somebody who has some experience, especially after losing Sam Williams, somebody that you've invested so much time uh, into and money. And uh, obviously with his injury, you need somebody to be able to come in and fill that void. You're able to do so with a vet. Last year, he got on, he played on five games. The year before he played all 17, he got seven sacks. So we do have them reps to know how to sack a quarterback. So that is a good thing. <laughs> and he's not the only addition that this team has made to push this defense forward. As we take a look at some of the training camp additions, they've been very busy. The front office has put together this list of names that okay, they can really go through one by one and say, OK, defensive end, check. Linebacker, check. Defensive tackle, check. And then they trade for a defensive tackle as well, as well as Andrew Booth at the cornerback position. Isaiah, when you look at the depth of the roster, have they done enough to really ease your mind when it comes to that depth? They have eased my mind, but I, they, I won't, my mind won't be all the way uh, comfortable until I know that these guys are able to produce on the field. When you look at the interior defensive line position, obviously uh, they went out and got Jordan Phillips because they're not comfortable or confident with what they have in Mozzie Smith at this point in time in his career. So they needed to address that. And then at the cornerback position, I think they did a good job of swash, swapping out Nation Wright and obviously bringing in uh, Booth. We know we need depth in the middle. Mozzie has been very inconsistent during this training camp. So they have brought in guys. They brought in the Jordan Phillips. They brought in the Albert Higgins to try to give some competition there for Mozzie to, to, to kind of push him. But we won't know what this team really needs until the season starts. That's the big thing is it always can shift and turn. We've still got a long way to go until the season does come around September 8th against the Cleveland Browns. But when we come back, who will be on the roster for that September 8th opener? Can and Deuce Vaughn do enough to secure a spot in the running back room? 
Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Reliant, official energy provider of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, make your crypto play today. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Just like the roster is ever evolving, so are some roster battles that continue now that training camp is over with and the team returns to the star in Frisco. Welcome back in the special edition. Let's go through some of these roster battles, starting with wide receiver. The thought process here is that you're already taking five wide receivers. CeeDee Lamb, then you've got Jalen Tolbert, Brandon Cooks, Cavante Turpin because of his returnability, and then Jalen Brooks on that side as well. But there are three names fighting for that sixth spot. Brooks is one of them, along with Tyron Billy Johnson and Jalen Cropper. So with that being said, Isaiah, how do you see this wide receiver room playing out? It's very convoluted, Kyle. It is really tricky. I think that Tyron Billy Johnson had a really good training camp, but it hasn't showed up in the preseason. So I'm not really sure if he's going to be the guy there. Jalen Brooks obviously had a good uh, preseason last year uh, as well as a good camp. So it's really going to come down to who is the most valuable in the eyes of Mr. Bones Fossil. That's what it comes down to. What can you do on special teams? Because you're not going to be on the field a lot offensively. You're exactly right. When it comes to this wide receiver battle, Isaiah, they're going to be who's can, who can contribute most on that special teams. And to me, you got Jalen Brooks, the most experienced Experience within this system. He's made plays in, in training camp. He's made plays in his preseason games as well. But I think he brings an added dimension to that special teams unit. He can go down and be a gunner on punt. He can cover kicks offs as well. We understand who's going to be the returner in Turpin. So to me, you got to go with Brooks on this one because he brings more value when, it, when you talk about the special teams. You know, Jalen Cropper is the guy that had, I think, the most consistent camp. But a week ago, he had a boo boo and he missed a couple of passes. So I hope that don't continue to hunt him because I think Jalen Cropper has had the better camp. Uh, two drops against the Raiders and a muffed punt against the Raiders as well. So not a great day for Jalen Cropper. Ryan Flanoy, the only reason we didn't even put him in this segment is because he was a draft pick. And Cowboys have shown traditionally they don't move on from draft picks before the season gets going. So we anticipate Flanoy is probably already in that conversation. Now, Nate, outside of offensive line, you've had some close eyes on these running backs. Deuce Vaughn is a big name to keep an eye on, but also Royce Freeman, the veteran. You've got a Deuce Vaughn, undersized second-year player. Royce Freeman bringing the veteran ability. Which one has the edge? Whoever has the best uh, special team play. But I'm telling you, last week, Deuce Vaughn showed out. So uh, right now, I'm giving the edge to Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, to me, it comes down to, to what flavor you like. I mean, Royce Freeman, he's kind of in between the tackles, power back, short yardage type of situation. But you kind of already have that with Ezekiel Elliott. When you talk about um, Deuce Vaughn, he could be that change of pace back. He could be a receiver out of the backfield. If something were to ever happen to Turpin, he could return kicks as well. So it comes down to what your flavor is. And I think Deuce Vaughn brings a little bit more versatility than a Royce Freeman. My boy BC just hit on it. Royce Freeman is tried and true, but he also resembles a lot of the same characteristics as uh, Ezekiel Elliott and Rico Dowdle. Uh, the change of pace back obviously is Deuce Vaughn, but has he shown enough uh, in, the, in, the, in the time that he's had in the games? And is he versatile enough in the actual special teams play to add you, give you that value? You can't just be a change of pace back that doesn't get to touch the field and can't help on special teams. You also got to think about who might have the best possibility of staying on the practice squad, too. Mm -hmm. Right now, I, I don't know if either one of these guys would be in that mix, but you never really know when those roster cuts come. Moving to the defensive side of the football, how about the linebacker position? The Cowboys have upgraded linebacker. We just talked about some of the additions they made. Willie Harvey Jr.'s had a great camp, but then you've got some veterans like Nick Vigil, Buddy Johnson, who was on the roster last year. Barry, when you look at linebacker, who do you feel like has the edge at this point? Well, I got to go with Isaiah on this one. He talked he talked about this guy a couple weeks ago, but Willie Harvey. I mean, this guy has been pretty much a stable at that linebacker spot. He can come downhill, thump with the best of them, and he's shown some ability in the coverage. So if anything were to happen to the quarterback of the defense, which is Kendricks, I believe Willie Harvey can step in there and do a solid uh, role. My name is Willie. Willie Harvey. That's who I'm going with. I like Willie Harvey. Following him, I like Buddy Johnson because he's just a, a younger version of him. And then you have Nick Vigil, who's the veteran, who obviously you know what he can do, um, but he is the older version of those other two linebackers. Well, and he hasn't been in the room nearly as long as those other guys as well. And Nick Vigil specifically, he does bring some special teams elements. So you're talking about these roster battles. If you are going to make the roster, you have to contribute on special teams. So Nick Vigil 
not out of the conversation by any means. The conversation has shifted, though, on Ezekiel Elliott wearing a new number. Is this a new era for Zeke? And what are his expectations going into another year with the Dallas Cowboys? This segment was brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. Welcome back into special edition with Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, and Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Now, we talked a little bit about roster building, about some of the new additions for this Cowboys team. How about some of these guys that are returners for the team or maybe a veteran returner in the NFL? Let's start with Ezekiel Elliott, who makes his return to the Dallas Cowboys. What are the expectations realistically for Ezekiel Elliott, Nate, as he goes into this year? I just think Zeke can have a good year. I think around six or seven, maybe 800 yards, uh, 150 carries, and, and you know, and, and plus he can catch out of the backfield, and he is your third down blocker. I think Zeke can have a great year. Not nothing super, but just a nice year. Yeah, I'm with you on this one, Nate. I don't think he'll have, you know, over 1,000 yards or anything like that, but I think he'll be that short yardage back. We saw the Cowboys struggle last year with goal-to-go situations, short yardage situations. This is right up Zeke's alley. He'll be able to move the chains for this team, and that's what I kind of expect coming from Zeke Elliott this season. I honestly just think that he's comfort food right now for the Dallas Cowboys. I think that he's there to be a supporting cast to Dak Prescott, to be obviously somebody who's consistent in the running game, being able to fall forward, who's not going to make any mistakes, he's not going to have turnovers, and he's going to be able to be able to block in the backfield on passing down. So I'm not really sure of the expectations outside of that, but that's why there's a, a, a running back by committee. And is that enough to warrant a, a roster spot without another addition for Zeke? I think it does. I mean, I think they brought him back for a reason. I mean, you got to remember, you know, the, the, the politics of football. He is Dak Prescott's best friend. So, I mean, he's there because of what he can do, but he's also there because of who he's really tight with. And it, it, you've got a couple guys trying to get to that point in their relationship with Dak. And you've also got Jalen Tolbert, who's going into year number three. Barry, when you looked at Tolbert throughout the preseason, has he shown enough to become that number three offensive weapon? I believe so. I mean, ever since he's gotten into the league, he had a rough rookie season, but he's gotten better and better throughout these training camps each year. And I really believe that going into the season and towards the end of the season, he'll become wide receiver number two for this team. You know, I think, you know, CeeDee Lamb, of course, is going to get his touches. He's going to be that guy. But when you talk about consistency and winning the one-on-one -on -one battles, I believe Jalen uh, Tolbert will be able to do that this season. This guy's leaped every year from, like Barry said, he didn't did much of nothing his rookie year. Then the next year, he got 18 catches. But every year, I mean, but during the training camp, he, he really shine and during this training camp he's shining again what about on the defensive side with Eric Kendricks I mentioned returning veterans first year as a cowboy but this is not his first year playing linebacker Isaiah what can he bring to this defense leadership right off the bat leadership energy confidence in this new uh, Mike Zimmer defense um, he is he's he's a vocal leader he's a physical leader I mean he has more tackles in that entire room put together so you talk about somebody in which you you know what you're going to get out of him that is exactly it that's Eric Hendricks yeah he's got to be the quarterback of this defense I mean he, he's familiar with the Zimmer's um, defense going forward he can get this defensive line orchestrated as well as a secondary but he's got to be durable if we lose Eric Kendricks at some point at this year it could be disastrous for the season but I'm expecting him to be the quarterback of this defense and that's been a linebacker room that's been riddled with injuries throughout the year. So having somebody durable in the middle is imperative for Mike Zimmer in year number one. But Isaiah, you mentioned some of that leadership, that energy, that confidence. Whenever it comes to Eric Kendricks, when we come back, we're going to get a slight taste of that as Eric Kendricks goes mic'd up during his practice with the L.A. Rams. This segment was brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. One of Mike Zimmer's top priorities this offseason was to find a vocal leader that can help implement a new system and a new way on defense. And he did so by going and finding an old friend, linebacker Eric Kendricks, who has become a vocal leader in practice for the Cowboys. And he's looking to take that into the regular season. Hey, 
I'm, I'm, I'm mic'd up, so we gotta talk about doing our nails later. What? Nine on seven. I know you wanted to do your nails, you know, get them painted. I don't know, the white What? I'm mic'd up, though. Just letting you know. I totally forgot, too. I had drawn people. I noticed when I seen the camera right here. I was like, what the f Oh, f mic'd up. Happy you're not out here. On this game. Yes, one play at a time, flush it, go to the next, all right, and let's play fast and go make some plays. Mm -hmm. All right, our group right here leads the day. You guys hear me? Yes, sir. All right, all, go play football today. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get it. Here we go. Let's go. LB's on three. One, two, three. LB. Let's go, man. Come on, bro. I don't know. I don't know. How possible? Hey, three oh, three oh, three oh. Flash, flash. Go, go, go. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh my God! He made another one. He made another play. Oh my God! Run away! Run away! Oh, balls out! I want to play with suit. Do you think that you'd be just as elite? You think you'd be as effective? Yes. Like, you think you'd be able to the game as much as a receiver? Yes. No question? Hey, flash, flash, flash! <laughs> Man, hey, are you ready to like 10 yards shorter? <laughs> That's curls, bro. I got curl cream too. Check oh, me out. Yeah. Check my Instagram out. Yeah, I'll send you some. Eric Kendricks mic'd up during the joint practice between the Cowboys and the L.A. Rams. There's many more of those moments to come for Eric Kendricks in his first season as a Dallas Cowboy. But there were some memorable moments for Brandon Aubrey going into year number two. But what could be even better than drilling a 66 yard field goal? We'll tell you when we come back. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. And that ball has the distance, and it is good. 66 yards for Brandon Aubrey. How about that to close out the first half? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> An unbelievable kick. To round out the first half of preseason game number two, Brandon Aubrey, 66 yards. It would have tied Justin Tucker's NFL record if it were a regular season kick. Hopefully we'll see more of that as we go along. Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans. But what could be better than drilling one from 66 yards away? How about welcoming a brand new baby into the world? Baby Butter is, a, is what we're going to call him. As Brandon and his wife, uh, they welcome in a son to the world. An unbelievable moment on the field and off the field this past week. Congratulations sincerely from all of us to the Aubrey family. Family. Guys, how much of a weapon can Brandon Aubrey be going into the year? It's a huge weapon, especially when you factor in the new kickoff rules. And if the ball comes out to the 30, now all you got to do is get to the 20, get to, to the 50 yard line. So only 20 yard gain, two first downs, and all of a sudden bring your kicker out. <laughs> He's a serious weapon. If you can get past the 50 yard line and you're guaranteed three points, that's a huge weapon for the Dallas Cowboys. This is Nate's favorite segment because we're talking kickers here. He loves talking about kickers, right? <laughs> I know your first name, Brandon. 
Make me earn that second name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's already done it. He was hey, so that's free season. That's free season. Oh, that is. That's going to do it for us on <laughs> Special Edition. We're going to see you guys next week.